right. Welcome back to track one at the Plone Conference 2021, day one. And with me is Piero Nicoli, who is a front-end developer who's also been the organizer of the Plone Conference in Ferrara. And he is going to be talking today about Io Comune, the solution for Italian municipalities. Please go ahead, Piero. Thank you, Kim. And um, hi, everybody. Uh, so yeah, now we will talk about um, a solution that we built for uh, Italian municipalities and public administrations. So uh, as Kim said, uh, I work at Red Turtle. I'm also part of the Volto team. And uh, for any questions um, in the next days or whenever you want, you can find me on, on Twitter and on, on GitHub. And but yeah, I said uh, we built a solution, but a solution to what? Uh, why would the public administration um, need a single solution that works for every uh, specific um, municipality website or public administration website? Well, some of you have heard this already, but to be um, to keep everyone on the same page, um, let me tell you the, the story in a short version. So some years ago, the Italian uh, government uh, built the dig digital transformation team. And um, the team's goal was to, well, it's to uh, change how people uh, perceive online services and uh, websites for public administrations. And so a while ago, people needed to uh, know where to look for the right service, uh, what was the right office to go in order to do something and uh, that they need to do, and uh, what's the correct website for some, for, for some other services. And actually, um, uh, the, the digital transformation team built these uh, guidelines um, that uh, tell us that we need to build our websites uh, with the, um, with the, a focus on the on the user, so user centered, and uh, so that the information uh, that they can find there is readily available for them instead of taking long searches to find them. Um, so these guidelines that they built have common rules for content types and um, for the content tree structure of websites. And they also define a whole design system. And so we need a solution that scales uh, because we need many sites and many themes. Uh, and we also need to allow uh, few customizations here and, here and there because uh, they define the design system for all the websites of the public administration. Uh, but we also have to allow each client to bring their own uh, visual identity, so their own colors and their uh, own logos. Um, so actually the guidelines I'm talking about are version number two. We already had a solution and um, Nicole and I talked about it at PlonConf uh, 2019. Um, in late 2019 though, uh, a new version of these guidelines, the version number two, was published, and it actually changed the entire design. So we had to implement a new theme, and we decided to do that uh, from scratch, more or less, and we chose to adopt Volto for that. And this is how it's supposed to look like with our custom logo, and, but that's the design that they, uh, they implemented. Well, that's an implementation that they suggest for their design system. So what are our goals this time? So as I said, we need reusable and customizable themes. And, but also with this time, we wanted to use um, the Bootstrap-based kit that the digital transformation team has prepared. So they prepared the, an extension of Bootstrap 4 uh, and build their design system on that. So we wanted to use that. And we wanted to do that because that's one of the requirements in order to get our theme as the um, 
official open source plon theme for public administration. So there's a list and we want to be in that list for every CMS, there's a list. And uh, so also uh, one of the things that the, the community has built upon this kit is a React implementation of Bootstrap 4 with this kit. So it seems logical to just use that and build our theme on top of that. And but how do we build such product? So we we decided to build a common base theme and to build the specific sites uh, for our clients um, with the dependency on this common base theme. And we actually built that already and during 2020, and it's available open source at um, github.com slash rector slash design dash volto dash theme. And so you can check it out and I mean, play with it, fork it, whatever you want. And so the, the idea was, uh, okay, we can build a theme, the base theme for kit and for each client and, and we're good. Uh, but actually we want to build something more than that. So um, this is an example of how it looks like the, the already built one. Um, so actually we, we wanted to build more than that. And what we did uh, was already discussed last year, actually at PlonConf 2020 by Nicola. And um, he went into several implementation details and how to replicate this kind of um, product. And he talked about it in the YouTube link that's, uh, that's uh, over there on the, on the slide. And also you can find his slides on, uh, over at slides.com. But to summarize that, what we did was to, um, we wanted a base theme and we want to be able to upgrade that base theme and have specific client sites uh, depend on that in order to upgrade them um, all together. So we, in, in, the, in the repository I, I linked earlier, we replicated the Razor configuration of Volto to allow for a third layer. So we have Volto, we have our own base Volto and a specific, uh, uh, Volto repositories for every for every site, and we of course built uh, a second Yeoman generator in order to create uh, all of these uh, third layers, and we're done, almost done. So, yeah, this is what we did, and we're all almost done. And because there's this. Uh, small issue that we dealt with uh, since last uh, last long conference that is deployment uh, why is deployment a small, an issue um, because we're not deploying one site but we're deploying many several and um, so deploying volto is slightly more complicated than deploying classic clone not scary not too difficult it just takes slightly more, uh, a little more configuration, a couple of tools, extra tools and stuff like that. Also, baseline is you clone Volto on the production server and build it. And that's, yeah, when you have many on the same servers, I, I, mean, I mean, we didn't like that a lot. So we wanted to find uh, another way to do that. And also when you deploy, you need to add the more configuration because you have proxies, maybe more balancers, you need to be wary about caching and, and stuff like that. So we need to make this easily repeatable. And since we have, I mean, all of these deployments are identical because the sites are like the same site. So we want to up, also, we want, also want to upgrade sites um, all together when we improve the base product. So how do we uh, do that? Okay, some of you know me, some of you don't, but I get excited when I start tinkering with new stuff. And every time I, I tell the story, I bring this up. And so what do we do? 
we docker all the things, right? So that's how we make things repeatable, right? It's not that Docker is new technology, but. So we went a little deeper than just Docker uh, because we have these repeatability goals that I told you about, because we have, uh, if we add the ones in production and the ones in development, we have around 50 of these sites at this time and many more to come. And uh, so we started uh, testing, orchestrating our containers with Kubernetes. And also we started building our images on CI and um, everything that needs to be built and configured is handled by those tools. So those two uh, tools. So we build everything and on the production servers, we run containers and that's all the production servers need, will need to do. Uh, so that's actually our work in progress thing about deployment. We have some uh, of these sites in production. None of these still uh, runs uh, on Docker yet, uh, but we have deployed some that, should, that will go live in the next few months. So we're starting with these Docker and Kubernetes things but it's promising. So we, we will keep working on this. And yeah, of course, Docker allows you to avoid building Volto on the production server. So a few examples of these sites uh, to, to, to show you why I said they're all the same. Of course, there are guidelines and these guidelines are strongly encouraged and strongly uh, pushed by this digital transformation team. So actually, almost every uh, public administration who wants to build a new site wants to do the wants to do it uh, that way. So this is the very first one that we um, we pushed to production uh, almost a year ago, I think, more or less. And then there are uh, others. And then we build more and some more and some more and even more. And yeah, you can see that, that there's a baseline among all of these and some visual identity because we want to have, I mean, the idea is there are guidelines and you as a municipality or, or uh, whatever want to have your visual identity but the baseline is the same. And so what's there for the future? Of course, the future means two things, improving on like adding new features and also working on, on issues that you have because everybody has issues here and there. So what are our issues? So we said, uh, we dealt with the um, we dealt with the problem of upgrading and maintaining the code uh, with uh, by having a, a single base theme that we depend on in all of our specific client sites, and so the main code is the same for every site. But there's one thing that's not dealt with uh, by by that configuration that is the configuration files because having a separate repository for each site means that you have a separate Docker file, a separate CI configuration, separate package JSON with some dependencies and other things and so on. And so if I change how I want to build those images, I have to go to 50 repositories and change the Docker file. So that's not good. <laughs> that doesn't scale at all. So, um, how do we fix these and what other improvements um, are we working on? So, um, first thing is we upgrade our repositories, uh, the fifth, let's say 50 to make it simple, our 50 repositories um, all together. So, when we push updates uh, on the main theme, we trigger some CI things that uh, upgrade dependencies on all the, all the sites. 
and build new Docker images and stuff like that. Um, there's one thing that we are um, thinking about and, and experimenting with in the newer products that might help with the configuration files maintenance, which is using add-ons and creating, like moving the base theme to be just an add-on instead of a whole Vault repository. And this was actually an easy one to think of. I mean, it would be today, but when we built these base theme uh, in the first, um, like a, a year and a half ago, add-ons were not a thing. So there were no add-ons for Volto. There was no way to build add-ons for Volto yet. Uh, of course, building um, repeatable themes with add-ons is useful because you have one repository and one base add-on and our idea would be to have an, a separate add-on for each site. So you keep all the configuration, uh, deployment configuration in one, in one single place. Of course, this will cause more issues because we will need to separate our builds and make separate builds with the same repository based on which, one, which client site we want to build. Because if we build an add-on for each one, then we will need to find a way to not include all the add-ons in every build. But we're working on it. We have ideas and we have um, ways to deal with it. Um, so yeah, uh, as I said, if you're curious about uh, how we built an extendable Volto theme and, and uh, how we work on that, um, check out the link that was in the previous slide that I forgot to put here because <laughs> I didn't think about it, but it would be useful. So github.com slash red turtle slash design dash volto design uh, dash theme. And yeah, uh, everything that's that makes it work is there and any future work on it will be there. And yeah, thank you for uh, for attention and, and thank you for listening. Hero, thank you. Thank you for that great presentation. I, I have been wondering how you could manage to keep so many repos and projects updated like that. So I'm going to be checking out this repo. You should please put the link in the Slack track one, and that'd be great for others to see as well. But um, uh, I hope you'll join me in thanking Piero, and he's going to be in the Jitsi meeting, which will be right after this. And the button for the Jitsi meeting, of course, is below the video frame here in Loudswarm. So thank you again, Piero. And uh, yeah, don't, don't be too happy being in Sorrento, okay? <laughs>